Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's Truth Seeker here. And, yeah, it's the end of August. Tomorrow's the 31st. Uh, who'd ever believe? It is a warm day. It's 85, maybe close to 90 degrees. It's the way I like to see summer go out. But, uh, <clears throat> I've been very, very busy over the summer. And as I mentioned in my last uh, video, which was made probably back in February, <clears throat> the um, circumstances at the time had uh, really, uh, it was a, a dis disenchanted, <laughs> I was disenchanted with the the whole making videos business, uh, but my wife and I uh, did take walks. I, I mentioned in my last video that uh, I had a, a double knee replacement. Both knees uh, were replaced just about a year ago, uh, just a little shy of a year ago, and so. I'm trying to put them to good use <clears throat> and we have a place up here in North Jersey nearby it's a beautiful park called Skylands it's the New Jersey Botanical Gardens and we take walks every evening hopefully we'll get a chance tonight it's gonna be a lovely evening but during our walks uh, we notice some interesting things now some of the videos uh, I've taken here uh, date back uh, a month or more um, really from the middle of July to the end of July uh, piecing them together the butterflies um, and I just found it fascinating that right here in your backyard you know you don't for for the evidence of what science predicts uh, is right there in front of us right right in front of our noses if we look we don't have to be in a in a academic setting or in a museum or in some kind of scientific laboratory to to uh, to see science in its glory and and evolution in particular at work and uh, I noticed uh, with these uh, five species of butterflies that we were noticing that there was a very unusual moth it's called a sphinx moth or hummingbird moth and this little creature many people even mistake them as as baby hummingbirds but they, they have exactly the same characteristics, even the same uh, general body uh, shape, morphology, uh, the behavior characteristics uh, as a hummingbird. So I put together a, um, a little video uh, talking about uh, divergent and convergent uh, evolution. I didn't go into tremendous technical detail um, but uh, I used a <coughs> species of butterfly called swallowtail um, and each one of these different species that each one is very different looking from the uh, next uh, all came from one source and, that, and that's the beauty of evolution, is that it creates diversity. At the same time, uh, there's a, another uh, force at work, uh, evolutionary force at work, uh, called convergent evolution. And so we got examples of both. The hummingbird moth uh, with hummingbirds. I got some nice hummingbird shots. I, I bought a hummingbird feeder and every day we're just watching uh, uh, hummingbirds uh, fly back and forth all day long through our yard 
uh, in this feeder. It's amazing to see how active they are and how territorial they are. But their, their behavior is very, very similar to that of the, the moth. Uh, and, and a moth is an insect, uh, and uh, the hummingbird is, is uh, well, um, <laughs> A, a divergent, uh, a divergent uh, form that uh, derived from uh, dinosaurs, uh, avian-type uh, dinosaurs. So anyway, with this uh, little introduction, uh, I hope you enjoy the next uh, uh, 20 minutes or so. I, I don't think that the video is too terribly long. I give it a little narrative along the way, uh, but... Um, I, I'm not trying to present it in any real scientific uh, format, uh, but more or less just appreciating the, the beauty of nature, because that's what it's all about. I mean, that's why we escape uh, a cult, and that's why we, we, um, we want to be free. We want to be free uh, to live our lives the way we choose, uh, to think freely and to to behave freely make choices freely and uh and and not to have this pall of guilt and shame uh damocles sword hanging over our heads shaming us all the time about how sinful we are and uh trying to in this little clip bring out the the beauty of being alive and and the wonders of nature and, and and we're a part of that we're a part of that ecological system we have our, our own niche and we have a responsibility uh, to preserve our environment it's not only um, something that uh, that uh, should be done we have a, a responsibility uh, to make sure that we we don't do anything to do any further harm to this this planet but anyway with that I'll say so long and I, I wish you all the best in this video um, we see some interesting things. Uh, my wife and I were up at Skylands Manor, and uh, that is the botanical gardens, the official botanical gardens for New uh, Jersey. And we came across this bush that was loaded with butterflies, and in particular, uh, swallowtail butterflies. And in New Jersey, there are probably four or five different species of swallowtail, the most common being the eastern tiger swallowtail, which is the butterfly in, the, in this view. Um, we also saw a, a pipe vine swallowtail, which is uh, mostly black. Uh, we saw hummingbird moths, as you see in this uh, shot, this clip. And uh, we saw a, a giant swallowtail, which is a large black uh, swallowtail with a, a yellow band. And when, it, when we come to the clip, I'll, I'll show it to you. But what's interesting uh, about that, there's the, that was, that big black one you saw there was a, uh, was the giant swallowtail. And if you see an all black with a little, uh, blue dots, uh, that's the pipe vine. And uh, we, uh, there's the hummingbird uh, moth, and, and that's particularly fascinating because uh, here we see uh, evolution in action. Um, moths uh, belong to the same family, uh, Lepidoptera, uh, as um, butterflies, and uh, they, they evolved first, uh, but both species evolved during the Cretaceous period when, when flowering plants uh, came into being. And um, we have uh, examples here of di both divergent 
evolution and convergent evolution. Uh, divergent evolution is that the the moths and butterflies all uh, evolved from a common insect, and uh, and their forms uh, diverged over time, and um, and and the convergent uh, evolution is with the um, hummingbird moth that you see right here in this image, where they. Um, they uh, uh, can be mistaken for a hummingbird. Both both hummingbirds and and hummingbird moths, completely different species, but they've evolved to the, um, to live in the same ecological niche, and so they uh, have the same body form. They fly in with the same characteristics, and uh, they they. Um, they uh, are readily mistaken for, and uh, they live just like a butterfly. Here's the pipe vine uh, swallowtail. Uh, that's a that's a pretty interesting uh, butterfly right there. And it's beautiful. All of these uh, swallowtails uh, are beautiful. And these are tiger, eastern tiger swallowtails. But those. They, these are examples of divergent uh, evolution, and and the and the uh, hummingbird moth is an example of um, convergent evolution with a completely different species, um, uh, the hummingbird, which is um, actually uh, evolved from dinosaurs. Uh, birds uh, were were originally. Um, uh, from dinosaurs when when uh, they evolved um, over over the many millions of years uh, through the Jurassic and into the Cretaceous period. Um, if you look at this hummingbird moth, it it has the same body form. It flies with the same characteristics. Uh, it has a proboscis, a long proboscis that it unfurls and 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 uh, uses uh, to suck the nectar out of a flower, and it it takes the form almost exactly as a miniature hummingbird. Yet it's an insect that la that lives no more than um, uh, a month. Whereas um, hummingbirds um, will live five or, or so years, uh, but both uh, have exactly the same uh, characteristics, uh, both flight-wise and body form-wise. Uh, the hummingbird moth even spreads its uh, scales out at the uh, tip of its abdomen to make a... Um, a uh, a tail just very similar to a here's the giant that's the uh, giant um swallowtail uh, that is a, a very beautiful butterfly and they're relatively rare to see uh, but this one was attracted to this bush it, it this uh this i don't know what kind of bush this is but it really attracted the swallowtails and the hummingbird moths, or they're also known as hawk moths. And um, they're, they're fascinating little creatures. So uh, if you want to, um, <laughs> if you want to uh, see evolution at work and uh, just go to a garden and, and take a look at uh, the, all the butterfly species that you'll see, uh, because they're they're great examples of both divergent and uh, convergent evolution. So uh, with that, uh, I think if there's anything else uh, notable, I'll uh, I'll make some commentary to it. Uh, but uh, just enjoy these uh, butterflies as. There must have been 50 or 60 of them around this bush as I was uh, filming. And you could see them. Uh, it looks like the bush is alive with them as I I uh, pull back uh, from the zoom view. You could see them hopping from flower to flower um, 
numerous butterflies in this in this particular shot. So um, it was a it was an amazing thing to come across and to realize how nature shapes uh, these these creatures and 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 they they uh, make such a, a diversity of of um, many different types of of variety from a, a single species. Uh, numerous species will will arise, and then uh, if a species shares an ecological niche with a, a totally separate animal, it will uh, it will uh, evolve uh, to uh, mimic or not really mimic, but to to take on the same uh, the same um, morphological. Um, shape and, and behavior characteristics as uh, other animals that occupy that niche, uh, such as the hummingbird and the hummingbird moth, two totally different species. And it just is absolutely amazing that, uh, that uh, this, this occurs and that you can see this in your own backyard. This isn't anything that, that, um, you have to be uh, off in the Galapagos Islands to to see uh, how this evolution uh, takes place. Look at that that moth. Now I did uh, provide a slow motion um, image or, or or slow motion video of that moth. There you can see the body form, uh, but the slow motion uh, gives you a a better view. Now, a uh, hummingbird will um, uh, expend about 4,000 calories a day. Um, I, I can't imagine what this moth is expending uh, energy-wise, but uh, this moth beats its wings uh, 30 times a second. 30 times in, a, in one second. And um, a hummingbird will beat uh, its wings uh, 60 times a second. And like I said, if you look carefully, you can see that the abdomen, the very tip of its tail, uh, has um, some scales on it that, that uh, reproduce the same aerodynamic effect as a uh, hummingbird. Um, and it gives it the same exact flight characteristics. Uh, hummingbird moths can even fly backwards, just like a hummingbird. They they fly laterally, uh, and they fly, um, and they hover, and they can fly backwards. Um, and uh, they're also one of the fastest insects uh, in, in the insect world, um, where they can fly as as fast as 35 miles an hour. Now this uh, is a, a still photograph of a ruby-throated hummingbird, which is endemic to um, uh, eastern uh, northeastern United States. Now here's the slow motion video of this hummingbird moth, and you could see if you've ever seen a hummingbird that this flight characteristic is exactly like a hummingbird, and if you look at its tail. Uh, you or abdomen, you will notice that it has, it it extends these these little scales out like feathers, just like a, a hummingbird feather. It's just uh, absolutely amazing that that uh, you see this kind of thing, this kind of uh, uh, duplication from nature, just uh, as as these creatures. Uh, exist and, and live in the same ecological niche. So um, this is something I just wanted to uh, bring out to people because uh, I find it absolutely amazing uh, and that you don't have to be uh, in a scientific environment in order to, to see and appreciate evolution. In these last clips here, <clears throat> Um, I set up <clears throat> a stationary camera to film 
uh, the hummingbirds that come to my hummingbird feeder. Uh, this is the first year that we tried uh, putting a hummingbird feeder out, and it was because of the hummingbird moths. And uh, as you can see, the characteristics here, <clears throat> sorry about the throat, the characteristics here are so similar to what we see with the hummingbird moth. Um, a, a guy um, at uh, Skylands uh, asked my wife and I where the hummingbirds were. And uh, he had mistaken the hummingbird moths uh, as being baby hummingbirds. <laughs> That's how close uh, they were in behavior, uh, and and he thought he thought the, he was looking at hummingbirds when he was looking at an insect. I mean that that's quite a uh, uh, separation uh, between uh, animal types. I'm not a biologist, and. Uh, I don't know uh, right offhand uh, by memory the uh, Linnaeus uh, taxonomy, but I know there's uh, kingdom and uh, uh, order and uh, genera and so on, and they um, uh, they, they differentiate uh, by different characteristics. Uh, uh, initially, uh, when Linnaeus and uh, Darwin um, in their day. Uh, they, these taxonomic uh, classifications were made by morphology and uh, structural differences and similarities. And, um, and nowadays uh, we have genetics uh, that, that add to it. And um, genetics only uh, supports uh, well, what we've known for hundreds of years uh, regarding uh, evolution and the evolutionary uh, process and how natural selection is the driver for creating diversity amongst species or between species and uh, similarities between species that occupy, occupy the same ecological niche. And so I, I just thought it would be interesting to put this here. I uh, hope you all enjoy the, uh, the little display here that the hummingbirds uh, are putting on. It's just phenomenal. My, my backyard has turned into a little war zone uh, because these uh, birds are extraordinarily territorial. And uh, these are characteristics that they carry with them from the time of the dinosaurs. Uh, because essentially, when we're looking at birds, we're looking at dinosaurs. Which makes you wonder, um, were there dinosaurs? We always think of these giant creatures. Uh, were there dinosaurs that, that, that were uh, small? Uh, and there were. Um, there, there, the um, uh, there's the uh, Velociraptor, which was about the size of a chicken, uh, but I, I don't think a, a chicken is uh, a chicken is probably uh, uh, ten, twenty times larger than a hummingbird. A hummingbird uh, is only ounces. I, I, I wonder if there were. Uh, dinosaurs uh, of that size. There's so much that we just don't know um, because uh, we're limited uh, to only those uh, things that we can find in the fossil record. And uh, there's still many things to be discovered. But uh, we do have all of the evidence. Uh, science uh, not only... Uh, not only uh, supports it from... Uh, from uh, uh, a morphological uh, uh, um, observation of species uh, as Darwin uh, did, um, but uh, through uh, genetics, uh, we, we understand how um, diversity and evolutionary traits uh, 
uh, progress. And uh, it's just a fascinating thing. And, you know, this, this is a process that is not limited to Earth, but uh, wherever life uh, has found a way, um, there, there's an environment and there's an environment that they live in. And so evolution uh, is not just limited to Earth. This is a universal precept, a universal law that, that's true and carries true for any environment that, that could uh, support life. So this is uh, this is something that uh, I find uh, mind-boggling and and yet so enjoyable because the here it is this is our backyard I mean this is not this is not uh, some scientific laboratory uh, we can observe these things uh, right right in our own backyard and, and appreciate them. So anyway, I hope uh, you enjoyed some of this video. Um, if not for any of the dialogue, um, I hope uh, that you did appreciate you do appreciate it for some of the videos. Uh, I think they're kind of interesting myself. So uh, so long, everybody. I I can't say when I'll put up another video, um, but uh, I I if I do. Uh, I want to be in a long, uh, you know, edifying, uh, inspiring, or or interesting uh, topics, uh, and then and not controversial because basically life is short. We don't have uh, we don't have long uh, lives to to uh, uh, to to enjoy. Um, everything all of the opportunities that life affords um, and uh, we we should make the best of everything and um, you know we were talking my wife and I were talking yesterday and and um, we were we were uh, observing that really uh, coming out of a, a cult situation is basically a recovery but at some point in time, you've got to, you, you can't make that recovery, you know, your life. Uh, that, that, that's the problem uh, with AA, for example, with Alcoholics Anonymous, is that uh, meeting makers make it. And if you stop going to meetings, you're inevitably going to, to drink uh, and, and fall back into your alcoholic ways. Well, um, you know, I don't want you know to live a life where uh, several hundred people uh, are watching over my shoulder to make sure that I'm not drinking. I, I want freedom. I want life. I don't want to be chained to something that uh, that uh, I feel obligated to go. I mean, you know, when I was in AA myself. Um, you know, I felt obligated to to go uh, and attend a meeting uh, when I when I traveled, um, and <laughs> you know, uh, you had to come back with a report basically to your sponsor that uh, that uh, you know I attended this and this and this uh, meeting, and uh, th these are the stories I heard and such. You know, that's that's not living a free life. Um, and you know it's been since uh, 2007 uh, since I stopped attending, and uh, I've lived a very happy and fulfilling life. Uh, that is now um, at least what 2007. Uh, well, that's 15 years, and. Uh, since my last uh, meeting, and I uh, I haven't had the uh, the the compulsion, uh, the obsession, <laughs> uh, to uh, drink myself under the table. Life is about freedom, and that's what recovery from uh, a cult should be too. Because we only get one chance at this, you know. Who? 
can anybody prove that there is another chance? You know, we got to make the best of what we know we have. And, um, and uh, you know, it doesn't involve, uh, you know, doing things that are considered uh, uh, um, sinful or, or um, uh, immoral. Um, it, it, a person can live a, a perfectly moral and, and happy life without religion, uh, without... Uh, without substance abuse and, and so on. Um, it's, uh, and, and it's, uh, it's a good thing to be free. It, it truly is. So with that, I leave you, uh, with, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed, uh, some of this video, uh, if not all, and I wish you all, uh, the very best.